Building models from 3D printed parts is awesome. And now that 3D printing has gotten so mainstream, it's gotten 10 times easier. Now, from the perspective of not only a builder, but a designer, I want to show you some tricks that you can use in this process that'll make it 10 times easier and a lot more fun. Let's get started. Nobody likes removing support from 3D printed parts, but sometimes it's just the nature of the beast. Well, let me show you a really cool trick that I use to help me figure out what I'm actually looking at because when the supports print out in the same color plastic, it's really hard to tell what's a support and what's one of the details inside your model. Well, the easiest thing to do is have a reference. And in Windows, there's that super easy to use 3D viewer. So I always pull my file up in that and have it as a reference as I sit there and go through taking out the supports. That way I know exactly where they are and I'm not cutting into my model. What I always expect with 3D printed parts is they're going to have a lip. So where they printed on the print bed, usually that first layer gets kind of smushed and gets pushed out to the side. So always expect to find a lip on your parts where they were sitting on the bed of your 3D printer. Easiest way to get rid of them real quick, use an emery board and you can just cruise through really quick and get rid of that lip. But once you know to look for it, it'll save you a lot of frustration when you start putting your parts together and they don't CA fit. glue, better known as super glue, is awesome and super easy to use. Well, one thing a lot of people don't know is if you try to glue two pieces of plastic together that already have CA glue on them, they won't stick. You don't get that instant bond that a lot of times you do when they are both dry and you put some CA glue on them together. So what's the trick here? Obviously you use accelerator. And when you use accelerator, it instantly bonds that plastic with the glue and the glue to the glue. So it's really cool and it'll help us in our next cool trick is a lot of times when 3D printed parts, they break as you try to, you know, get them to where you need them to be. And you end up having to weld pieces together. Well, I already showed you the accelerator trick. Let me show you another cool trick as well. A lot of people don't realize, but another thing that reacts really well with CA glue is baking soda. And baking soda and CA glue mixed together is really cool because it not only does it bond almost instantly, it also builds up. So it's like having, you know, a little extra plastic in your process. So as you put your pieces together, if you need it to fill in a little bit, don't be afraid to use some baking soda because it's almost like super microscopic concrete and it fills in some gaps. Really cool trick. When you print out parts out of PLA, or ABS for that matter, they usually come out with a little bit of a shine to them, which is great if you want shiny parts, but if it's not what you're looking for, you either have to use a different material like carbon fiber and those other types of matte materials a lot of times are real hard on your printer. So there's another easier way, well there's actually two ways. One is you can wipe a little bit of acetone on your part and it eats away the very, very first layer, the tiniest of layer. But when you do that, it leaves a little bit of a white haze, and we'll get to that in a second. The easiest way to get rid of that shine really easily is to simply use a wire brush and go against the layers. And when you do that, you'd be amazed how quickly that shine goes away. There's a couple of usual suspects when it comes to this white haze, and usually it's either dust from your super glue or if you used acetone to dull down the finish, it'll leave this white haze because when PLA breaks down, it turns white. Now, there's a couple of different ways to get rid of it. And by far the easiest is with your Sharpie. Now, the reason I say using a Sharpie is, is super easy to do is because especially if the whole point was you were trying to go with a matte finish, then your Sharpie, once it dries, usually kind of leaves a pretty matte finish and you maintain that kind of uh, rough surface that you were looking for. Another way to get rid of it is to use a little bit of petroleum jelly. And what petroleum jelly does is it gets in there and it fills in and it basically hides the, uh, the white dust. 
And at the same time, once you go back and you wipe it off, you still maintain that matte finish, but you really got to get it in there. Um, another easy way to do it is to just use like a toothbrush and really grind it in there. Uh, and then that way it'll take care of your dust. Now, petroleum jelly will leave it a little bit shiny, but once you go ahead and wipe it off, that shine goes away, but the dust is also gone. Another easy way to get rid of dust is just to clear coat it. But the whole point sometimes is you don't want everything to be shiny. So if you want it to be shiny, just clear coat it. Done. Easy. If you don't want it to be shiny, either use petroleum jelly or a Sharpie. When it comes to refining your parts and smoothing everything out, with 3D printed parts, of course, you always get these little edges and things. My go-to tool is an emery board. And you can get these in packs of like, you know, 10 to 15. And it's definitely my go-to tool. Another thing is, is not only just emery boards like these big ones, but for smaller pieces, you can get these super tiny ones. And they're super easy to find any drugstore, any beauty section of any store. Um, obviously they're used for filing down nails. Another uh, fantastic piece of gear is an actual nail file. And the reason I like nail files is because they have this tip and they're really strong. So if you need to get to some really tricky supports that are way down in your model, a nail file is a great piece of gear. One last thing that you might not have thought of is I love to use and always have around my baby flathead screwdriver. And the reason this is so good is especially with most supports being zigzag, you can plug this in way into hard to reach spaces and then twist it and it'll break that support. Also, it's really good for getting at kind of crazy hard support on the sides of your model. All you have to do is push it in and then pry and then all you have to do is break that support and usually it'll fall right out. So a baby flathead screwdriver, emery boards, and some nail files. PLA fire. has a really low melting temperature. So for models, it's actually really cool because if you ever have a part that doesn't come out right and you need to just tweak it a little bit, by far the easiest thing to do is just hit this with a hair dryer for about 10 or 15 seconds and just bend it right back into place. Now, understand that you should be using a hair dryer and not a heat gun. A heat gun will blast through PLA way too fast and it'll just ruin your um, ruin your piece. But a hair dryer on low fan um, is usually a just perfect amount of heat and you just have to get it kind of warm and it'll get a little malleable and you can fix it. Okay, let's talk about primer. Really two kinds. There's primer that has some filler in it, and that's great if you want to try to get rid of some of your print lines. You can see the big print lines here, but you can't see the, the, the smaller ones, and that's what primer's really good at covering up. Also, if you're not worried about the print lines, you can just go straight for either primer for plastic. It's also called adhesion promoter. And this is really, really good for plastic because it makes your paint stick very, very well to the plastic and you get a fantastic result. Let me show you one more really cool thing about primer. Primer is fantastic if you want like a flat color. You can either get flat white primer, gray, or obviously black. And it gives you a really fantastic flat matte finish. And you could just go with it like that. It's really durable just the way it is. Now, I will show you something that's also really cool though, is a lot of people don't realize with primer, because it acts a lot like clay, you can actually polish it down a little bit. And when you polish it down, you get this really kind of wild effect. It actually shines up a little bit. So you can do a couple of different things. You can actually go straight flat black, or you can go just a tiny bit of shine. And also what's cool is if you do this on pieces that have raised edges and things, the edges will get polished and the parts underneath will not. So it's also a really cool effect you can do with primer. And a lot of people don't know that. Quick tip when it comes to painting. If you're gonna paint your model and you already know you're gonna paint your model, if it's going to be a bright color or a piece that's gonna be a bright color, always print it in white. White shows up fantastic underneath colors and it makes them much, much brighter. 
if it's going to be dark, and I mean really dark, like it's going to be a black model, then go ahead and print the base of your part in black and that'll help. If you need a ton of detail, wood filament is fantastic because it's so easy to sand and it actually prints really, really well. So if you need detail, use the wood. If it's going to be dark, black, and obviously bright white. Let's talk about tolerances, and I can tell you from the perspective of a designer, tolerances are super challenged with plastic because different printers actually make a difference. So what happens is trying to find that perfect fit between pieces is a real challenge. So as long as you understand that and you're expecting it, it's really easy to fix. So if this is too tight, I can either make this piece 1% bigger or I can make this piece 1% smaller. Usually anything more than 1% and you're gonna start having fit issues all over the model. But if it's just two parts that go together, 1% or under 1% on either part usually does the trick. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you got something out of this video and if you've got any questions, you know where to check us out. CommandoDesigns.com, I'm Tony D.